Hello, everybody. Hi. Thank you for tuning in. We're just waiting for uh, Ev to join us. Hi, Hannah. We're so excited to uh, speak about and chat. Actually, it's a casual conversation about a very important uh, topic. I'm just waiting to invite Ev one second. Hi, Rana, Yusuf, Rayan, Habir, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Mm. We're just waiting for a couple of minutes here. So how is everybody doing? How are you feeling today? Hi, Ev. I can't see you. <laughs> Hi. Ah, here you are. Yes, amazing. Connection is good from your end and also from my end, right? You can hear me, see me well? Yes, I'm glad. Perfect, perfect. So we have, uh, we, we can wait for a couple of minutes, maybe three more minutes to wait for more people to join. And in case uh, not many join today, we, can, we will save the talk for later, but we can just, uh, you know, say hi to each other first. And I want to thank you so much for, um, you know, getting excited about this talk. Um, I, uh, I introduced you on my Instagram a while back as my Ayurveda uh, guru or expert. And you're, you're more than that to me, you're a friend. Actually, me and Ev, we met in our uh, sound, uh, you know, Gong Master course uh, in the UK. And since then we've been nothing but very, like sisters and, and family. Sisters. Yes, so um, the reason why we're doing this talk, uh, this talk is just the beginning of uh, future partnerships. It will go beyond just doing talks. Uh, Ev uh, luckily visit us, visited us in Saudi um, two years ago and fell in love with the country and the people. And the, uh, you've seen some of the nature sceneries, but um, you're, you're one of us now, your family. So thank you. Oh. I was about to say I'm very, very glad that you invited me because thanks to you, I had this amazing experience in Saudi. I just um, met incredible people. I was surprised at every corner. And I'm so glad that I can I get to, to do something for, for your people there because it gets me back there. And it was a, a brilliant experience. Amazing. Uh, Ev came uh, to Saudi when it was uh, the Raya season. Yeah. So the beautiful, you know, uh, uh, cultural experience, beautiful weather. It was uh, December, I think, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, and the food experience. So uh, we're really, really happy that you, you, you uh, visited I, us. Um, yeah, I took too many more. Of Saudi, yes. <laughs> So um, we can start, I think, and uh, we can always save it and uh, other people can uh, tune in uh, whenever they get the chance. So the reason why um, uh, we chose this topic to start with as part of our first collaboration together, um, uh, which is uh, AMA, and we are uh, uh, tapping into this topic from um, uh, your Veda, from the science of your Veda. We're going to get uh, a little bit into everything but bits and pieces so uh, before we start i would just like to to mention that this is just um, you know uh, appetizers for a workshop or a master class that uh, ev has designed and we will uh, 
I will announce uh, about it uh, after this uh, talk for sure. So this is just very uh, high level discussion. It's a casual chat, but then there is a masterclass, a long one. We're going to get into deep into different topics within uh, the main topic, Amma. Uh, before everything, we would like to have a couple of minutes for Ev to, you know, uh, introduce herself to us. So I know you very well, but I would like for the listeners to get to know you, your story, your background, experience. So it's all yours. Okay, I'm going to try to make that quick. Uh, due to, to the great age. So I was actually a movie producer for about short of 20 years. And... Like a lot of people, um, I, I was living very fast-paced, a lot of stress, a lot of traveling, a lot of, you know, family stuff, work, everything. And I guess at, towards the end of this experience, I had all the symptoms of what they call a burnout. And that kind of decided me to take another um, direction. And I just decided I became sick myself and I couldn't figure out I, how to put myself back on my two feet. I was very disconnected from my body. I went to the doctor, he couldn't help me. And I met Ayurveda as if that was a person. And everything changed because Ayurveda is, um, Ayurveda is a science of balance. So you were born with what they call a constitution, a bit like in Chinese medicine and in Indian medicine, the same. And you were born with a constitution. And every time you have a disease, that would be an imbalance of this constitution. And what the medicine does is to make you reconnect with what you're made of, what's going to aggravate your condition, what's going to make it better, etc., etc. So I got into Ayurveda to go back to me and became a an Ayurvedic practitioner and then left all the movie business behind and went on to becoming a yoga teacher, a sound healer and a gong master and all these kind of things like this is how we met. And yes, and all holistic medicine. So now I do concentrate on Ayurveda and sound healing mainly. Amazing. Um... Uh, to be honest, my personal experience with Ayurveda is so powerful. I've seen it uh, in, my, my, in my own life and I've seen it uh, with my uh, a family member as well, where um, a family member was told that, you know, you have a chronic disease, um, you will live with a chronic disease for the rest of your life. And that specific autoimmune disease uh, will require that person to be you know, away from people, away from animals, uh, not be able to travel uh, um, as often. And uh, our experience in, in this story specifically was very devastating, at least for me to see a family member uh, will go through a, a dramatic uh, life change. Uh, and then when we hit rock bottom with all solutions, because all solutions from, you know, uh, from, you know, from the technical professional side were kind of very transformational in terms of life changes. And uh, we were eager to look into Ayurveda to see what solutions Ayurveda could offer us. And when we had our first Ayurveda consultancy session, it was so, so amazing how we, it looked at, you know, our food, our eating habits, uh, sorry, our um, sleeping pattern, our lifestyle, um, just life choices in general. And we had to modify, even if it's, modifying what time we drink our coffee in the morning you know instead of starting it first thing in the morning we wait for a couple of hours until we have something light like fruits and then and believe it or not simple examples like this has changed you know the situation of this chronic disease or autoimmune disease to to almost completely invisible now so exactly. I'm, 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 I'm a very strong believer when it comes to Ayurveda and the reason why we agreed to start with this topic specifically, Amma, um, yes. is because uh, Amma, which is basically what comes out of, you know, um, toxins, right? So 
uh, with with what's go going on now in the media, whether uh, in social media or even if simply going to a supermarket and trying to to shop grocery shop, you would see a whole aisle of organic items and items that can help for detox or sometimes even us in the yoga field or in the yoga industry we hear a lot about you know the green juice detox or intermittent fasting if you want to lose weight etc and i myself went through that loop of following certain um, you know uh, detox methods and uh, not knowing that actually what what uh, this detox method might not work for me or actually doing that uh, method is actually not advisable when you look at it from a holistic point of view and it can contribute to um, AMA, the build the buildup of AMA. So this is why we chose um, um, uh, this topic. That And indeed there are like a lot of meat to be debunked when it comes to detox. It became like a marketing argument almost, you know, it sells, oh, we're going to detox. And we hear a lot about the superfoods. Uh, we hear a lot about ways to detox, fasting being one of them. So we thought we would have this talk to just put in perspective what really works, what really doesn't, and how it works as well. So going back to what you were saying, I think it's like, if you allow me for like three minutes, I'm just, I think it might be helpful to explain the principle of Ayurveda and how we see things. Uh, I'm sure some of your viewers here actually um, have come to other workshop and have an idea of what this is. But uh, basically Ayurveda is a medicine of balance. Uh, you were born with a constitution and this constitution is made of five elements. So there is air and space, which formed the first constitution called Vata. And then we have fire, which is pita, and uh, earth and water, which would be kapha. And pretty much what Ayurveda does, like Chinese medicine does actually, is to categorize everything on this earth, everything material, be it your, your being, your body, who you are, but also your environment and the food you put in. And in Ayurveda, there is one principle, which is that like increases like. So therefore, if your nature, you have the five elements in you, you wouldn't function without just one or two. You have the five. What matters here is the proportion in which you have those. So say you have a majority of this pitta, which is like the fire, you would be more inclined to inflammation, for example. And if you are very stressed at work, if you eat a lot of spices, pepper, mustard, vinegar, lemon, stuff like that, you're going to fuel this fire and therefore like increases like. And so going back to our conversation about AMA, we, in Ayurveda, like one of the lead principle of Ayurveda is the digestive system. If your digestive system works and works properly, then in that case, every food you're going to, every food incoming will create toxin, but your ability to get rid of it is what matters. If this digestive system works properly, then you create less toxin, you create no toxin, e either or, or at least you eliminate them properly. And this is all the, the, the cornerstone, if you wish, of this conversation. What are the foods which are going to increase um, what are the foods which are helping me getting rid of it what is according to my constitution the things i might be doing or should be doing to avoid creating those toxins and why is it so important because if the digestive system is at the root cause of all disease in ayurveda the truth is that it's due to the creation of ama the ama is a block toxins are a block and that block is well, what do blocks? They block your arteries, that's called cholesterol. They start like piling up around your waist, your thighs. This is cellulite. You know, AMA has all these kind of forms. We can talk about what AMA is, by the way, at some point, but. Uh, we said, uh, we, when we were preparing for the stock, we said 
Um, in Ayurveda, it's not a one size fit all. So Ayurveda is a holistic ancient science and whatever suits you might not suit somebody else. So whatever you put in your body today might not put, uh, suit somebody else's uh, body. And also from my experience in Ayurveda, when I did my first consultation, I was told by the consultant that, you know, whatever I tell you now, it might change when it's summer season. So you will need to keep on modifying your lifestyle and specifically what you eat according to the season. So there is kind of connection between human beings and the weather and what we put um, in our body. And I really found that uh, really, really interesting. Yes, everything matters. Your, the environment you're in, the, you can, in Saudi, um, you have a very hot and dry environment, right? So yeah. this categorization of those things around us and of, our, of ourselves is, you know, the categories are according to the attributes and the properties of this food. So when you live in an environment that's very dry and hot, you want to go the opposite way. You want to go at the other end. So for example, like cocoa water is very cooling inside. You know, you're going to go the opposite way to create balance again. Always this, uh, this. but yes. You, you actually said something very interesting today when we were preparing for the talk. You said, uh, ama, when we talk about ama, we don't only mean food. We, we also include conversations that we talk in our heads. So when we talk about talk. toxins, because people sometimes uh, who would like to like lose weight and, and choose certain style of fasting or would like to detox, for example, to drink the green juice or whatever choice they make uh, with the mindset of detox, some people think that, okay, whatever I'm drinking is doing the job to make me feel fresh and new. But it, this, this, from what you spoke to me today and actually found it so amazing when you said it's not only about what we eat and what we drink, when you look at it from Ayurveda perspective. It's, um, so another principle of Ayurveda is that to heal, you have to understand the root cause of the disease. The root cause of the disease can be your lifestyle. Say you work like 12 hours a day in a corporate environment, very high maintenance, very high expectation, working long hours, finishing at three o'clock in the morning, which I've seen in Saudi actually, <laughs> um, you know, sleeping four hours and going back again. This is stress. This is stress. You're pulling all directions. You don't have time to eat. You don't have time to sit down. So you're going to eat a sandwich on the go. You're going to work 12 hours. You're going to come back tired. And maybe you come back to someone who is very irritable, very angry. AMA is not just the bad food. AMA is toxins are not created just bad food. Toxins are also subtle. The food that you eat has energy. And for someone who is kapha, for example, someone who is very sedentary, who would have um, an ability or at least a propensity a propensity to to put on weight would their taste would go naturally to cheese and and bread and all these very soothing kind of food sugars and stuff like that these people in their nature would tend to be also sedentary the more you're going to eat food which has the property of kapha the more you're going to be immobile you're going to be you can become depressed you can become the food you ingest as an energy and will provide this energy and really organizes your activities during the day. So, you know, eat something with fire in the morning and slow releasing sugar and you're going to have some energy going faster. We can talk about this because I forgot to say something actually during this talk. Ramadan Mubarak to most of you <laughs> on this call and you are currently fasting. And you spend like hours not eating anything and the lack of suddenly like pushes you to have like a lot of food that's going to be very nourishing. Like the dates, dates are fantastic. Dates are like very nourishing. They are aphrodisiac. I don't know if you know that. Actually, they replenish the tissues. They have a lot of like potassium in them and a lot of iron. And the potassium is very good because it actually 
works against cholesterol. Okay, so that's all very good. But when you've been fasting for like, let's say about 12 hours, right? The best thing to do is like your morning, your morning breakfast before sunrise in the morning, right? Mm -hmm. You should have slow releasing sugar, like in the form of rice, in the form of potatoes, like natural sugars. Have that in the morning before fast starts and you will get this energy and you will less, less craving as well. And you will have an energy that goes with it. You have the sugars or energy which are distilled in throughout the day. You avoid craving this way, you know? And you also like, we are away from Amma now, but we know that Ramadan is a purification as well, right? It's, you, you will tell me. Here in the West, it's the spring coming. We come out of winter where we've been very sedentary, very immobile, less activity, less exercise. I know it's not so much your case. Mm -hmm. In Saudi, it's a bit of the opposite because you enjoy like the, the coolness of the winter to be able to be active. Mm -hmm. But still now, this period of time of Ramadan allows you to give a break to your uh, digestive tract. It's very good to give it Actually, a break. Uh... Yeah, thank you for reminding. Actually, this is one of the main points we were uh, we were planning to cover. So it's not about we're, we're changing perceptions about you know green juice and intermittent fasting. But then we chose this topic specifically to go high level. And then there's the master workshop that we're we'll announcing soon um, in this topic specifically because in Ramadan. Uh, Ramadan is known to be a month of purif purification, whether emotional, mental, and physical. And then the physical element, when you look at the way how you know many families eat in this part of the world, it's mostly, yes, amazing fasting and praying and getting all that done. But then when it comes to breaking the fast, it's mm -hmm. about filling all the cravings. You, you, sometimes you don't get it. Like, why are you fasting if you're harming the body? If you feel so bad after breaking the fast that you can't even move, then this is a red flag already. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in this holy practice, we were not meant to do this practice to feel tired after breaking the fast. It is meant for us to feel energetic, to feel good about ourselves, even after breaking the, fa the fast. So... I'm very passionate about it now and I'm, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, happy that a person like you is with us in this conversation because something needs to cha change, you know, we've been going through a lot lately with this, you know, Corona, a lot of people are having, you know, wake up calls, uh, awareness about their overall well-being. And I would like just to invite all of us to still keep that momentum going, even if it's Ramadan. So for example, if we are used to having five pastries or six fried pastries with our soup, let's try to count how many pastries we have this month or this year. Instead of having six, let's have one or two. So let's just be mindful because whatever we're building in the fasting time, as you said today, whatever we're, we're building during fasting time, but when we break it and then we, when we have a lot of soup and a lot of pastries fried and sugar and the whole uh, dining table is just filled with so many options. And uh, here we invite toxins to the body. It's a bit like, you know, like the yogi in India. Interestingly, the yogi picks food that's, um, that, gives it, that gives him the most energy, okay? but that will be the easiest to digest. Mm. So he's going to have a dal of lentils. He's going to have a bowl of rice. We don't need much to go on, actually. What we need is the right food. So quick sugars, for example, are going to trigger like fruits in the morning will trigger the wheel for more sugar because fructose mm. gets digested in 45 minutes. So what you want is those slow releasing sugar to give you the energy, the absence of craving, the wanting, you know, of like, oh, I am, I cannot eat. So I want, I want, I want, and the obsessive thing about it. But then, yes, I think like the, it's a great occasion for you all. When you don't make your digestive system 
digest for 12 hours. It's really a vacation. Ayurveda is based on that. Every time you want to heal someone, you start by giving him or this person some advice about how to put this digestive tract on vacation. He needs a break. The way to give it a break is to eat, eat simple foods, to not mix in, within one meal too many different foods, you know, but to have very simple food like rice with vegetables, like, you know, uh, sweet potatoes, like whatever. This kind of slow releasing sugar, simple food that can be identified by the body very easily, digested by the body very easily and without creating this toxin. You know when you have a big meal and you feel like sleeping right after? Mm. All your blood concentrates in the digestive system. Mm. There is no more energy for the rest of you because it's all in the digestive system. You probably remember this big lunch at the family where everybody ends up on the sofa and you know those family days very where... familiar with this trust me right exactly and that happens simply because we've just eaten too much and all this energy has to con be concentrated on the digestive system when your digestive when your digestion sorry when your digestion is going to be like six seven eight hours we see traces of meat three or four or five days after mm -hmm. having a meal right mm -hmm. traces of meat in your digestive system from five days ago for some people kapha people very slow digestive system the slow digestive system is going to create toxins if you for example very small thing we'll talk about all of this in the workshop give recipes the herbs to get rid of the toxin the herbs to to not the diet, not to create too much of it. We'll go through all of this. But in essence, if your digestive system works properly, you get rid of those toxins properly. So what you're going to eat within one meal is actually very important. Like, you know, mixing, for example, mixing animal protein, milk and uh, meat. It's mm. not great at all very difficult mm. to digest that creates ama like eating fruits after a meal fruits as i said is fructose 45 minutes to be digested when you had a big dinner a big lunch that's like you know of like appetizer the main dish and dessert and teas and cookies and biscuits and i don't know what all of this and you have a fruit after that that fruit is gonna give you gonna produce gases get you bloated being bloated for example is a symptoms of the creation of ama simply you know we want things to come in and out as quickly as they came in right mm. almost that would be the idea and so you don't want things to be blocking the pathways and what's going on and we'll talk about that about um, sorry in the in our workshop as well, the creation of disease in Ayurveda is very, very important. The importance of habits. What are your habits? And we will ask that to the participant for them to send us ahead of time. What are the habits? What is it that you drink every morning? Is that a tea? Is that a coffee? Is that four coffees? Is it like, what do you have for breakfast? What do you... What are your little habits? Because those little habits do create, they do create imbalances. I had a patient, for example, who had a urina urinary tract infection for over seven years, seven years and a half, going to specialists, going to GPs, not getting rid of it, okay? Female patient. Like very, very bad urinary, urinary infections. As I'm having a consultation with her, I ask her about her habits. She was drinking like a liter of matcha tea every morning. Being convinced that matcha is a superfood and convinced that this superfood is going to get her better, energetic. Better. Turns out matcha is pita. It's a lot of fire. 
put it on me with a lot of kapha and, and vata, no big deal. Put it on someone, have it for someone who is pita, and suddenly inflammation starts to come. Not just that, but expose yourself to sun, be in the heat, have matcha tea or black tea or this kind. Of, those are small habits we don't really Pay perceive attention. as important. And yeah. they create the imbalances and the creation of this ama most of the time. So this is a, we will talk, I think like the workshop, we will talk about how you create those toxins, how to get rid of the ones you already have, how to, how to actually spot them. Where do I see that? Your tongue? There, there is a self, there is a self diagnosis process that anyone can do while you're here. So having Eve with us in the workshop, she could just guide us on where in the body that you can diagnose and see uh, potential or possible toxins in the body and, yes. and know what to do with what you eat. And, and you know drink. that even the coronavirus, for example, like your, your, pulmon, your, your, um, your lungs, right, mm. are like a tree. And this tree has like a ramification and it's small, small, small like pipes, right? Where air mm. circulates. Suddenly, ama was created. Toxins were created. And they are solid. They have the properties of kapha. They are immobile. They are solid. And they stay. They stick. And they are sticky as well, actually. And what's going on? You block this tree. This breathing tree gets blocked by toxins. How do you get rid of those toxins? You know, just a simple everyday ginger, lemon, and honey tea will help you dramatically. Just the honey, honey is heating. It will help like, you know, um, dissolving the toxin, liquefying the toxins, so you can actually expel them. This is the kind of things we will talk about. What are the, all the kind of things that you can do to get rid of those blockages? Cholesterol is ama. Cellulite is ama. Um, having this, like, the corona, you know, like the, the extreme cases or like when you've gone very far, like the impossibility to breathe. It's all these alveoli which are blocked, right? Get rid of the ama and you unblock the people who have, like... Um, stents you know coronary stents this mm -hmm. is blockages due to ama all of this so we'll talk about what creates it how to get rid of it pretty much that's the idea and also we we tapped into today on a very high level not but i think it's worth mentioning you just uh described some of them but i think the rest of them is also worth um you know talking about when it comes to the type of food that create toxins or ama um, raw food okay so with raw food I think it's a bit tricky because usually uh, when I was in, in corporate uh, you know I was in corporate setup um, the fastest and most like the healthiest way of having a quick lunch is ordering a salad and we would order like huge uh, plates of salad believing that we got the healthy routine going but then what happens when we eat raw food? Um, so, very high level discussion. We, we don't need to go through it in deeply. But I feel like this example specifically is important because I feel like many people may relate into believing that having salads all the time is very healthy. Yes. But it's not necessarily true. And I think, okay, so again, I can only speak for Ayurveda, but... The key is the digestive system. If your digestion is good, you're not sick. That's one thing. Second off, everything that's going to be difficult to digest, like we talked about another example, like different kind of foods, like, you know, rich food, sugar at the end, like the whole thing. That's also difficult to digest. The reason why vegetables, raw vegetables and fruits, not fruits so much, but vegetables, are difficult to digest is because we don't have the enzymes for it. I'm sure you'd already had a lettuce, a salad, thinking, oh, I'm going to eat light today. And you come out of lunch and you look like six months pregnant. I'm pushing it a bit, but you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Bloated. Why? 
because it takes time to digest. We don't have these enzymes. That's the thing. If you want to give a, a break to your digestive system, the food. Cook. Just, it's very mechanical and simple. Imagine like you have, um, you put something in raw like this. The, your teeth are breaking down the food. It comes to your stomach. The, the juices, the dig digestive juices come down and start to, if it was cooked already, the process is like half the time. Yeah, right. okay, got it. That brings me, and there's another thing, since we're talking about this, there's the question of juicing, which we talked about as well. Yeah. Juicing is like the new craze. Not so much for us. In Ayurveda, not so much. Juicing is not that exciting. The reason why is, first of all, usually when you get a juice, you get a big juice, right? It's like, okay. It is liquidified already, which is great, but it's raw. But all this liquid will dilute the digestive, the digestive um, function. Yes. It's just too much, drinking too much water as well. Okay. That's, okay. You know, same thing. Drinking too much water, juicing, dilutes all the, the digestive liquids in your mm. stomach. And so your what we call agni. This is agni is the digestive fire. Mm. You weaken it. Like for example, someone with pita has a lot of agni, very strong digestive system. Very, it's these kind of people were very irritating to me because they can eat everything, okay. anything. I think that's a bit of you actually, <laughs> and they will not put a, a gram on, not nothing, mm. in and out. You know. And this is like some other people more like kapha-like, also the static kind of more motherly energy, nurturing energy. You know, it's the opposite. They need more of this fire. They need this thing to digest. Otherwise, their digestive system is very slow. So yes, the raw vegetables, it's better to eat cooked. It's better to avoid juicing. At least in great quantity. I mean, you can have a small juice because you okay. want it like as a starter or something, but those huge glasses of juices in Ayurveda, we're not fun. We think it's actually not helping your digestive system. Maybe we can take uh, also one, and like another example. I, I've, I've wrote down some of the, the examples you, we discussed today, but we can maybe tap into one if you, if you like it. There is uh, also, um, uh, uh, napping after a meal, eating fermented meals, uh, yeast, for example, drinking ice cold water. And of course, we, we don't need to speak about greasy food. It goes without saying. But then the other examples like napping after a meal, fermented meal. But um, even and food, Ralia, even greasy food, if yeah. you know which spices. And actually, very often it's interesting because you would ask your grandparents, and they would have all the Ayurvedic recipes. Like mm. my family, like on my father's side, they're from North Africa, right? And like they would put this fenugreek everywhere on food. You, you have fenugreek in Saudi, right? Mm. Fenugreek is very easily found. It absorbs sugar and it absorbs fat. Mm. It's like fat is good for you. Sugar mm. are good for you. It's just the quantity and how your body is going to get rid of the excess. This is really, truly what it is. So the date that you eat for Ramadan, date, as I said earlier, quickly, has a lot of potassium. And potassium is very good against cholesterol. So you have heavy meat, fatty meat, greasy meat. Putting some fenugreek on top will absorb the excess fat, for example. There are many ways. We mm. talked about drinking ice cold water in the yes. Not great. Uh, ice cold water also is, is kind of irritating to the digestive system, especially like the lining of the stomach. And the absorption is much less. You know, like you digest first and then there's assimilation of all the nutrients and all of that. And the expulsion, the, the kicking out of the toxins... And very cold water is actually not great for that. 
that's that was an example you talked as well about fermented food mm, so yes. people food fermented food whatever is fermented will keep on fermenting in your stomach so if you have gas for example it can come from fermented food the yeast that you find in bread as well you know mm. the bread like when you have a pita perfect there's very little yeast or no yeast when you have like those puffed up yeah ball of bread it's completely different there's a lot of yeast in it so if you want it to detox truly detox you know start drinking room temperature water i know in saudi it's a bit of a pain mm. um avoid fermented foods cook your food when it's ramadan have like some a lot of sugars in the morning natural sugars as i said in the it can be rice rice vermicelli mm. have like you can also have something that's very nice you can have a porridge with basmati rice and coconut milk in which you can chop one or two dates right Okay, you, this is you mean for breakfast, right? Yeah. And you have that for breakfast and it's going to keep you going like hours and hours. Very Amazing. simple food to digest, basmati food, basmati rice, sorry, extremely easy to digest. It will nourish the tissues, it will give you the good kafa, the nourishment mm. that you lack for these 12 hours of fasting. You see? And in the evening after the you know when sunset comes when you go eat, indeed a light dinner is better a light dinner of like soup because you're going to go to bed and when you go to bed your digestive system goes to bed as well mm -hmm. and what happened an undigested food which is Pretty the different mm -hmm. undigested unprocessed useless for the body so when you eat in the evening something light and when i say light i don't mean a salad i mean a dal of lentils i mean some rice with cooked vegetables like i mean can... that is uh, cooked in a way that it's easy for the the stomach to di digest this is what yeah. we mean when we say simple food it's not really salad or raw no, food not necessarily it's cooked food Slow, in your case, for Ramadan purposes, like slow re releasing sugar. But in the evening, you can have like a soup that you've made with like rice vermicelli and some vegetables in it. Okay. You can add spices and colors and then suddenly you're excited and you can have a piece of like pita bread or something like that. And this is light because it's cooked. That means that in the morning you wake up, you feel like you have this flat you know, this flat stomach kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Right? Amazing. Uh, this uh, discussion is uh, getting juicier, to be honest. And I have some questions for you, but I feel like let's uh, keep my questions now on the side and, and go through what we have on the chat because we, I see some participation yes. here. Go ahead. Uh, Abdu is asking a question. Does Ayurveda cover aspects other than food intakes? like nature around us, sun ray or sun exposure, sea water, or not really? Completely. Everything matters. They believe that the minute you are incarnated in this like material form, we are, we seemingly are matter, right? Seemingly. The, this, at the, the minute where you become this human being, you have the five elements. The table I'm, 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 on, it, I'm on now, as the five elements, the environment, like the way you spend your vacation. For example, Vata people, they love horse riding and cycling. And sometimes I hear myself saying to a patient, you have to stop cycling now. And he's like, why? Too much air, music, like, you know, too much music. I have a friend who is a DJ. She's a DJ, she cycles, she listens to music all the time. Vata is aggravated, like increases like. Pitta, uh, you are like, you are, um, how do you say that? The CEO of a company or a manager. You have a team. You work 12 hours a day. You are a perfectionist. You are extremely dynamic. You can't let go of your goal. When you go running, you run 
an hour and a half mm. every day. All of this is pita. All of this matters very much so. I have a patient right now who for 20 years can't digest. And the last seven years is in bed, in bed for five days every time, he's, every time he eats. Pita, 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 pita. The stress is stress that he received from his banker, the stress that he received from his activity is a trigger to other illnesses. He said to me, all my energy is in this, in this stomach of mine. All this fire is angry. Anger is pita, very much so. So the food but, you... But what is the relationship of nature, nature in terms of like sun or seawater uh, uh, in, in, in relation to us as, you know, human body or in, in, what, what does Ayurveda believe when it comes to that? think that everything has properties, right? Okay, so yeah. My banker working 12 hours, spending his whole day on the beach under the sun cooking, being stressed at work. Yeah. All of the okay. eating, eating spicy food, right? And greasy food. All of these have the same properties. Okay. Put them all together and you will have a tendonitis. Everything that ends in itis is inflammation. You know that, right? Yeah. Like tendonitis, like... Um, right, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Arthritis, yeah. all of this. There is inflammation. Eat more of the, the, the fire element, expose yourself to fire more sun and you will aggravate. For example, in the Sharaka Samrita, which is like the, the Bible, if you wish, of, um, of Ayurveda, uh, it says it's prescribed for Pita people with inflammation to take a walk under the moon. Mm, interesting not under the sun because the moon yeah the moon is cooling the moon yeah. is feminine energy and pita is very masculine pita right. is fire pita in you is the person that's gonna get to the goal that needs a goal by the way without a goal pita doesn't know where to go you need a goal you latch onto it you know like the dog that doesn't, doesn't let go of your pants right you latch onto it and you are excessive and you run your your physical activity is excessive it's like footing every day jogging every day it's like martial arts it's like fighting it's like okay. all of this is your environment and so yes nature um the attributes of nature do balance us right now because we are urban beings most of us on this talk anyway probably are from Riyadh, from london from i don't know where we are urban beings so yes going back to nature is beneficial to all of us in many ways but for different reasons to be able to reconnect Great. There's also another question here. Lulu, my dear friend, is asking, how do I know what type of Ayurveda body type I have? So we're doing this talk as a continuum of a previous conversation we had with another Ayurvedic um, you know, practitioner speaking generally about Ayurveda and how it works. You've, you've hearing uh, Ev now saying Kapha, Peta. Some of you might wonder what these are. These are body constitutions. So in the science of Ayurveda, when you do a consultancy session, the consultant will ask you questions about uh, like a holistic kind of point of view, what you eat, what, how many hours you sleep, what you drink during the day, everything, really everything. And then according to your answers, you will be put on, under a category. So there are like three kinds or three categories and you will be put under category. And ideally, we, we all, uh, ideally, we should be balanced in all of them. Uh, right, Ev? We should be balanced with our own nature. With our own nature. And this is what's interested, interesting. You were born with your nature. Mm -hmm. And meaning that you had an amount of vata, an amount of pita, and an amount of kapha. Right? The mm -hmm. difference between you and me is that I have more kapha and you have more pita, for example. Interestingly, and that's also something we said we'll treat in the, in the workshop, but it doesn't matter. 
interestingly, a dosha in Sanskrit means weakness. This is what's very interesting. It's like what is predominant in your nature will also be your weakness. Because you will be attracted by food of the same attributes. You will be attracted by activity with presenting the same attributes. And therefore, you naturally, your taste will go to what is your dominant attribute. And again, like increases like. Therefore, aggravation. And this is why we'll talk about how disease creates itself. But to answer this question, question you yeah. can find on many websites, you can find your, you can type on Google, like Ayurveda constitution and answer a bunch of questions and have a better sense of, of what is your, your constitution. The best way of establishing that though is through a consultation because I have sometimes two, three consultation with a patient and I'm still not sure what is their nature. What I, the reason why I can still heal them is because I know the nature of the imbalance they're coming from. Mm -hmm. They have a disease, disease, right? The disease. They have a disease and I can figure out what is the imbalance of the disease so I can get rid of this. Mm -hmm. But it's only after the first, the second consultation. It's very psychological. And we can do a workshop on this because this is so interesting. Even if you read it on a website, the truth is that it's psychological. It's like the, the food you eat. It's the environment you're in. You know, it's very, very interesting. And our one, last, uh, yes. one last question before we say goodbye. We're kind of uh, a bit uh, way uh, uh, out of time. We have one last question. What about between iftar and suhoor? So iftar is the time where we break the fast. And then suhoor is the meal we eat before fasting. Um, what, what do you think of that period in terms of, because we spoke about during iftar and we spoke about what would be advisable to eat before fasting. What about in between? As uh, in like you were talking about snacking in between? Yeah, for example. Do you, do you snack? Is it something that everybody does? To be honest, personally, my, I don't really snack per se. I might find myself eating if it's snacking, but then it doesn't become a snack anymore. I just don't, I skip the late, the late uh, dinner. So I would break the fast and then some, whenever I get hungry, I eat a little bit, but then that would be it. So, uh, but you know, with Ramadan, the, the routine is very tricky. Sometimes we have habits where we get invited to gatherings and then things get out of place. But awareness sessions like this will make people remember what to choose and what not to choose when, even when they're out in, in I, gatherings. But Ramadan is but, a beautiful thing beyond the religious, I mean, religiously as well, but that's not the topic now. But I think it is purification. That's what we talked about mm -hmm. at the very beginning of the talk. And I think you have to, I do, and I don't know what I'm saying here, but I have a sense that there has to be with it, the feeling that you are cleansing yourself, truly. Okay. So snacking or between, as we said, you know, the two meals that you have, I mean, if you're hungry, you're hungry and you're going to eat something like uh, hummus is good with like maybe rice cakes because, you know, it can like, what I advise you to do is to eat a lot of sugars, natural sugars. That really is my bottom line because what's happening with that? It's not only like the fact that this slow sugar are distilling energy slowly it will prevent you from craving other stuff. It will come and soothe your head as well. Kapha is soothing. Sugars are, it's, it's calming down. It gives you, you are, you know, you talk about chakras, I'm sure, like in your other, in your yoga classes and all the rest of it. We are talking about eating food that anchors you, that makes you grounded. And so, like indeed, like eating between, you can add, you can have fruits. If you don't have fruits, like after a meal, 
fruits are very good to have alone because they are digested quick. They are digested quickly, but they might trigger some craving. So really, it's your first meal in the morning should be something that has a lot of sweet and allows you to to go through the day without having those cravings. It will change your your psychology kind of thing. Amazing. Thank you, Ev. There's another question here, but I feel like we're way uh, you know, uh, out of time. But if you feel like you can answer it very briefly, yes. If not, you can send me the answer and then we can share it on. on I can do it quickly. So, natural yeah. sugar are uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, best is basmati rice, actually. The longer the grain or, you know, the longer the grain of rice, and I think you have that in Saudi, actually. So not it, brown rice. No, you can have brown rice, but, mm. like, you know, just even white, the, the longer the, the rice itself, the easier it is to digest. Okay. Um, so rice, sweet potatoes, potatoes, I said that. You can have lentils. You can have um, mung. Do you know mung, mung dal, mm. M-U-N-G? Mung, yes. the beans, very easy, digestible. There is, on the website, on my website, there is, um, and you can find it on the internet anyway, there is a recipe that's called Kichari. K-I-T-C-H-A-R-I. We will talk about this at our workshop, but that's a very, this is natural sugars, basically. Okay. Uh, as well. Honey is a natural sugar and a very good one as that, at that. You know, it tells a lot about me and you, Ev. We are so passionate about it to the extent where we extended the talk 15 minutes more. So this is amazing. I'm actually really happy with this. Anyways, thank you yeah. so much for your time. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you feel like you benefited from this video, please share with your loved ones. And if you have any questions, you can either ask me or ask Ev, my friend. And stay tuned for the announcement of the masterclass. Thank you so much, guys. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Anya. Bye. Bye.